this here is the brand new 2020 Signature Camper Trailers Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, it's one that we've just brought, uh, literally just come off the lot at, from Brian Hilton uh, Toyota. So we went through a stack of different choices and options for vehicles. We've obviously had Rangers before. A lot of people have seen our Rangers. We've had um, the Prados. We decided it was time for something new. Um, Toyota's always been a trust, uh, trustworthy brand. We went and had a look at the patrols. We even went down the Defender path and a few other sort of um, bits and pieces. But ultimately the Land Cruiser is just uh, really the ultimate tow vehicle. We're fortunate to get one of these before the V8 ends. It's actually one of the last ones um, that uh, they've only a handful sort of left in Australia for sale. So we're fortunate to get that. Um, it's comfortable, it's reliable. There's parts all over Australia for them. Um, there's, it, they're easy to modify. Um, it's easy to get accessories for them. And they're just, um, they're just really a very, very comfortable tourer and, and a practical wagon for, for what we want to do with it. So this Land Cruiser is actually going to be built as, um, it's a bit of an all-purpose vehicle. So it's actually going to be a daily commuter. So it's a, it's a daily driver from home and back to work. It's also going to be a long distance tourer. So the way that we need to set this, this um, car up is for um, both uh, towing camper trailers um, around Australia as well as solo travel. There are certain trips where we go where we won't actually take camper trailers with us, um, where you might throw the swag on the roof. So it needs to be practical in both senses, both in terms of towing, um, as well as being completely self-sufficient. Um, it's going to be, we're going to do a lot of a uh, lot of really cool things in terms of accessories that we trust and we, we know that um, are reliable things that we've tried and tested before. Um, and a couple of new things that we want to that we want to try out, but ultimately um, we're not going overboard. It's going to be um, something that your average punter can do. It's going to be practical build, a practical um, setup. Not you know every man and his dog is uh, is at the moment doing a doing a chop or a big seventy nine build or all the things that that um that is well out of the reach of most people. Um, this is going to be something that is um, commonly available. Uh, it's it's reliable and it's something that um, that is achievable for most people. First of all, we want to make sure that we've got adequate protection um, for, for outback touring. So a lot of that's the bar work. Uh, so we've, we've um, ARB are looking after a lot of the bar work, both in terms of underbody protection, all the way up to your bull bar um, and your side rails and, and even down to the rear bar at the back for um, for carrying a spare, spare wheel on the very back. Um, underneath the rear, we'll probably put a long range tanking just because of the, the extended kilometers that we'll, we'll be doing in this vehicle. Um, obviously we're gonna do wheels and tires. Wheels and tires are massively important. Just the stock tires just don't cut it. Uh, so we'll look at putting some um, some either either aggressive all terrains or some mud terrain tires on. Um, we're gonna put a, a new roof rack on, um, probably the ARB base rack looks like the way to go at the moment. Um, we've also, we've already done the suspension, so we'll run through that very shortly, but we've done a GVM upgrade um, on the car. There's a snorkel going on it. Um, and in the back, we're gonna look at putting some drawers um, with a uh, with actual fridge drawer from Evercool. Um, so basically it can be used for, for um, multiple purposes. So build's gonna take a couple of months. Um, with COVID and everything else that's going on at the moment, there's a massive shortage of, um, of supplies. We've already ordered a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff was actually ordered a couple of months back when the vehicle was first ordered. So we've got a few things already in, um, but there's still a few things, drawers and whatnot, that um, it doesn't look like they, they're gonna be ready for another month or two. So um, we'll work on this in bits and pieces. Um, the GVM upgrade's already been done, suspension's already been done, because that had to be done pre-rego. So we're gonna whack the snorkel on today, um, and uh, we'll look at taking the taking the rear seats out, and this week it heads off to ARB, so ARB can start doing some, some bar work. Um, but ultimately, to finish it, it's gonna take a couple of months while we work out the best way forward and what we really wanna put in this car. So let's roll the Land Cruiser out, let's throw it on the hoist, and, um, and we'll jack it up and, and check out the suspension work that's been done. So this sit-up, we've gone for a number of reasons. One, the reliability. We've used ARB products in the past in um, suspension for, um, for four-wheel drives, and um, we've had reliability's been brilliant, and they, they haven't let us down. Um, we've gone the, uh, the BP51s, um, just because they're a, a solid unit for a car that's this big and this heavy, um, you know that they're, they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be a good, good bit of kit. Uh, we've gone the 400 constant load springs in the back. The reason for that is we've got a lot of extra weight that's gonna be going in this, it's gonna be permanently in it. So we'll have drawers in the back, there'll be a fridge in the back that's gonna be permanently in it. There's a rear bar going on, plus a rear tire carrier. Um, there'll also be a bigger fuel tank going in underneath. So lot, all of that adds up very, very quickly in terms of, in terms of weight. We've also gone the airbag man coil helpers. Reason for that is when we throw a van on and we can tow all sorts of different um, towable weighted vans um, from our biggest van that's uh, that's you know up up and over 200 kilos um, down to our little one, which is uh, our deluxe two, which can be about 100 kilos. 
The weight that we're carrying on the back of this car can vary greatly. What the airbag man coil helpers let us do is adjust the actual pressure within those bags, which means that we can always have the car sitting flat. So when we're traveling thousands of kilometers at a time, we know that we're gonna be traveling safely. The car's gonna be nice and level. It's gonna sit on the road very, very comfortably. So that's the back setup. Let's have a look at what's in the front. So up the front here, we've got the, the matching uh, BP51 coilover um, shocks um, with heavy duty um, spring in the front because of the extra weight that we're gonna be putting on the front of this. We've gone with a heavy duty spring. Um, uh, in terms of the upper control arms at the moment, they're standard. We're gonna see how we go with that in terms of the, um, the fitment of the new wheels and the alignment. If we need to change it out, that's not a hard job. This model here has actually got the KDSS. We've had KDSS on previous Prados that we've had and we absolutely love it. The, um, the, uh, the way it controls the car is just unreal. So um, when the auction came up and whether we actually get a model with KDSS or without, it was a, it was a no brainer. Um, it works brilliantly. We absolutely love it. So we've stuck with that. Uh, and we're also gonna look at doing a Bendix brake upgrade as well. The extra weight that they're carrying in the back of the, um, back of the car, as well as the trailer behind, the brake upgrade kit's just gonna give us that peace of mind that um, in all of the conditions we're gonna be stopping, especially when it's gonna be going through a lot of water, mud, dirt roads, um, as well as a lot of highway driving. Um, that'll give us the confidence to know that we're, um, we're all good to stop. So we've done a pre-rego GVM upgrade in this car for a couple of reasons. One, getting it done pre-rego means that it's actually federally recognised, means that if we do uh, go interstate for some reason and need to register the car interstate, that it's recognised interstate, so it kicks off the boxes. Also means we can actually get a slightly higher um, upgrade. So we've gone with the um, just over four tonne upgrade rather than just over the three, three, uh, eight tonne, which is, um, which is post-rego uh, post upgrade. Uh, the GVM upgrade, Land Cruisers as themselves only have about a five or 600 kilo carrying capacity. You throw a couple of people in there um, and a bit of luggage, you're pretty close to actually reaching your GVM. Uh, because of the amount of bar work that we're going to be putting on this, as well as the drawers in the back, um, potentially rooftop tents on the on the top, as well as the weight, the total weight of the camper trailer behind goes towards your um, your GVM. Um, it wouldn't take much for us to actually reach that limit and possibly exceed it. We exceed the GVM and then we have all sorts of implications, both legally and, and in terms of our insurance. So it's just a massive peace of mind thing to um, to have that GVM upgrade done uh, done nice and early. The whole process of this build is going to be filmed. Uh, first step is actually the snorkel through to, um, through to the uh, rear cargo barrier, the drawers. Um, everything is going to be filmed the whole way through it. So we'll show you how we actually do that. Bits and pieces that we do versus that we go and get the, um, the professionals to go and sort out um, in terms of the kit up of the ARB equipment and whatnot. So we'll film all of it. We'll let you know how we do it, um, why we do it, how it's done. Um, and ultimately, we're going to go and use this vehicle. So it's going to be out on the tracks. It's going to be out touring. Um, and we're going to take you with, uh, take you with us as we, um, as we use this new Land Cruiser as it should be used. Thank you.